Thank you for joining us today for our second webcast in our food and beverage series. This time we're going to focus on best practices for scaling your company's growth uh, and your recipes using technology. And we're joined again today uh, by Matt Brown, CEO of our technology partner, Wherefore. Up on the screen, uh, you can see our agenda. Um, we're going to jump into that after we do a couple of brief introductions. So we're going to touch on uh, where and when to introduce technology, talk a little bit about business continuity, uh, scaling up your recipes, safeguarding your formulas, some comments about batch cost, excuse me, batch costing, and then talk a little bit about tracking waste and yield all in a, a digital environment. So if you have questions, uh, please submit them through the chat box at the bottom of the screen. We will be monitoring that throughout the webinar. We're going to try and answer as many of those as we can during the Q&A at the end. If we don't get to your questions during the webcast, we will certainly circle back with you afterwards. And then at the end, we're also going to have some polling questions that will pop up, and we'd appreciate if you could answer those uh, just so we can get some feedback. And then one final thing, you know, we're always interested in getting feedback from uh, people that dial into these webcasts. So if there's some things that are on your mind that you'd like us to consider for future webcasts as it relates to, you know, food and beverage companies and, you know, the accounting for it and the tracking of, of information through uh, systems, we'd certainly be happy to try to address that. So if there's anything that's on your mind, please feel free to, to drop that in the chat box for us. Okay, so I am Frank Balistrieri. I'm the partner in charge of the consulting practice here at Sensible San Filippo. And like I said, I'm joined today by Matt Brown, the CEO of our technology partner, Wherefore. Uh, let me give you a little bit of a background about SSF. So we're a full service accounting, consulting, and advisory firm. We've got six offices in Northern California and serve clients across the United States and have been in operation for over 40 years at this point. In addition to audit and tax, our consulting group also offers a wide range of services, including fractional CFOs and controllers, outsourced accounting, internal audit, and technology. And we're one of a handful of accounting firms that's B Corp certified, which is a designation that indicates that we strive to balance purpose and profits. In the food and beverage space, this has been uh, something that we've been getting a lot of questions about lately. So if you are interested in learning more about that, uh, please let us know, and we'd be happy to circle back with you on that to provide some information. And in fact, we just did a webinar a few days ago about this. We could certainly provide that link to you uh, as well. In our consulting practice, technology plays a significant role in the way that we bring our offerings to our clients. On this slide, I've highlighted some of the main technology partners that we work with in order to be able to serve clients efficiently and effectively. So from transaction level processing to budgeting and forecasting to maintaining your general ledger and working through your financial close, we've partnered with what I believe to be the best in class software providers that are out there. Um, and, you know, part of our approach obviously is to bring that technology to you to make life simpler for you. And then we've also got Matt Brown here, as I said, Matt, can you please give us a brief intro into uh, Wherefore? Sure. Thanks, Frank. So Wherefore was started in 2015 by a team of business consultants. We were working with large consumer packaged goods companies at the time and saw a lot of the advantages of scale that large companies can get. And unfortunately, until you get to be that large, uh, growing a manufacturing operation can be a pretty rocky road. So we started working with some smaller and some mid-sized companies and went around looking for tools for them to use and got really discouraged by the lack of good options. The products that were available were just either too expensive and complicated to configure and train people on or way too basic and specialized to be very useful in the long term. So we designed Wherefore from the ground up with our own technology, designed it to be a modern platform and meet the needs of today's manufacturers. And today we're in, uh, used by companies in five countries and across various industries. And our overall mission as a company is to help our smaller and our medium-sized 
customers access the same tricks and techniques that the big guys do. Terrific. Thanks for that, Matt. Um, okay, so let's uh, get things kicked off by talking about growth and scaling. And in a minute, we'll also um, talk about recipe management, which is a basic building block and how that plays into all of this. So there was a point in time where large food companies dominated food and excuse me, large food companies dominated food innovation. And as you can see on this slide, um, these are actually real products that that were launched at one point in time. Uh, there's probably a reason why that has shifted. Um, <laughs> the, you know, the landscape that we're in today continues to evolve and consumer demand is changing all of the time. And that really requires a, lem a level of nimbleness that these large food companies just can't achieve anymore. And, and looking at some of these examples of uh, ideas that they've had in the past clearly points to that. Um, and so they don't necessarily focus that much on innovation internally anymore. And instead, a lot of them are looking to make investments in smaller companies uh, like those of you on the line today. And what we're seeing in the marketplace is, you know, capital infusions into companies like that and also outright acquisitions once you get to, um, you know, a point in time where you're large enough uh, that they can bring you in-house. So if you're interested in hearing more about that and how we can help you prepare, uh, please let us know and I'd be happy to uh, engage in a discussion with you about that or perhaps even develop that into a separate webinar in the future. Food innovation continues to take place at a pretty rapid pace. And if you've been to any of the, the food shows around the country, you can certainly see that with the types of products that are coming out and um, how fast they change you know, to stay up with consumer demand. Disruptors are now forcing manufacturers to change the way that they operate and go to market. Think of these food delivery companies that are now out there. Um, it's really changing the way that the consumer gets food. And many of these small food companies that are out there uh, are really bootstrapped and money is tight. They don't have realistic business plans or budgets, and they really don't have a lot of direction in terms of where they're going. Uh, at least what we've seen from some of the younger companies that we talk to. They have a really good idea, um, but they don't necessarily have it mapped out completely how they're going to get there. Um, the back office, uh, which is really the accounting function or the finance function, uh, and the rest of the administrative work is really an afterthought. And they spend most of their time, as they should, focusing on selling their product. And so they struggle to understand their cost of production at times. They struggle to fulfill orders on time and they don't necessarily have the insights to make well-informed decisions. And the, the sad thing for me is what they don't realize is that it doesn't take a large investment to really get your back office uh, up and running. And over time, at least what I've seen throughout my career is if you skimp on that or don't invest in it early enough, it actually ends up being more expensive down the road to go ahead and try to recreate all of that information after the fact. So uh, the good news is, you know, there are options available for companies, especially young companies, to jump into the technology pool and really start that at a much earlier point um, in their existence. And most new food companies follow a relatively similar path. So they have an idea, um, and that is often something that ends up getting produced in a rented commercial kitchen, or sometimes they may even do it at home. If they're successful with that, uh, and they can attract a retail buyer or enough of a, a following at um, you know, your local um, you know, weekend uh, food distribution places, you kind of get to this first fork in the road where you have to make a decision as to whether or not you're you know, on a flight path to where you think you can invest in your own facility or outsource it to a contract manufacturer. And there's pros and cons uh, to each of these. You know, things like cost, quality, ability to scale, those are all factors that you need to consider. Um, and at some point, you might be fortunate enough to grow to the point where you can bring it all back in-house and manufacture yourself in your own facility. So you may ask yourself, 
with everything else that's going on, when's the right time to introduce technology into this equation? I would argue that the answer is right from the start. So we live in a world now where technology has become affordable and can certainly make your life simpler. The challenge is that many can't often see that when they're knee deep in the middle of trying to manage production, people, sales, human resources, uh, you name it. But you know, there's definitely cost effective solutions out there and we're gonna touch on some of those today. And I think the thing that is, is really important related to that is when you hook up with um, you know, a software like Wherefore, that can handle things all the way through from infancy to I'm a really big company now and I'm producing quite a lot. So the way that you may need to utilize that software may change a little bit over time, but certainly, you know, early on in terms of traceability, it's there for you. If you were to outsource, you know, eventually to um, a co-packer, you can still utilize that software from a cost tracking standpoint. Uh, and also with traceability too. And then if you bring it back in house, the same thing is there. So you've got continuity with software like that all the way through. And then the general ledger packages that we're gonna discuss in just a second would be the same uh, type of situation. Okay, so the path that companies follow related to the production of their products is actually pretty similar to how you can view this concept of your back office or your finance function. So when you first start out, Oftentimes, you're going to maintain your information on you know, a notepad or an Excel, and that works great for a while, but what you quickly find uh, is that after spending all day working in your business, making your product, packaging it, dealing with suppliers, dealing with customers, then you're spending all your nights and weekends working on your business, trying to maintain all this back office type information um, that needs to be done. So, you know, you've got sales tax filings that need to be done. You've got to get your invoices out. You've got to collect cash. There's just a lot of moving parts to uh, starting a business. And those of you on the line, I'm sure, are more than familiar with all of that. And for many of you, this is not something that you're necessarily good at. Uh, and for a lot of you, it's, it's something that you don't really want to do. It's a necessary evil of being in business, but certainly there's opportunities to uh, engage with other folks to help you with that. Um, and it really takes away from the time that you need to spend on growing your business and also spending time with your family. Uh, and so here's the fork in the road for you as a producer. Do I outsource my back office to a third party or do I keep doing it myself? And so, you know, there's definitely some advantages to outsourcing and it can be quite attractive to get someone in there who's managing your books and oftentimes, you know, set you up with appropriate technology uh, that can be a big help to you early on. And depending on the level of outsourcing that you need and ultimately what your goals are, they can also help you get set up with a set of financial statements that you can then use you know, to the extent you need to go to a bank to obtain a loan or a line of credit to help you continue to fund the business, they can be there for that. Sometimes as you start to grow and you may be dealing with a larger retailer, they may ask you for some financial information uh, because they want to make sure that you're going to be able to meet the demands that they put on you and that you've got capital resources available. So there's a lot of reasons why getting a set of financials ready sooner rather than later um, can be pretty important to you. Um, and then the other thing that they can help with are, you know, strategic goals and strategic planning, um, working on a, you know, a mock of a business plan or a budget so that you have some direction in terms of where you're going um, so that you can then focus on making your product, focus on distribution and building relationships with your vendors and your customers. And a lot of companies find value in outsourcing, but sometimes, you know, our entrepreneurs say, you know what, I can do it on my own. And so that's okay too. Uh, somebody from the outside can help you get this set up and then you could continue to manage it on your own. It's, it's really up to you. But my main point here is technology is your friend and don't be afraid of it. We can certainly get you set up and, and help you understand how you can utilize it to make your life easier. Um, and then just like on the manufacturing side, as you grow and get larger, at a certain point in time, you want to bring all this stuff back in-house. 
and, and manage it on your own. And so with scaling, bringing technology into the practice early, um, there are some advantages. Um, I always believe that technology should be part of the plan from the start. Bringing technology on board early in the manufacturing process is really critical to being able to efficiently and effectively scale up your business. And this is even more true today as the food safety rules are continuing to change and now we're going to be required um, to have a technology tool that can aid in traceability and wherefore is certainly uh, a great product and Matt will touch a little bit on that when he speaks in just a few moments. And then as your companies grow, if you don't have a solid understanding of, of the cost of production, you can literally go broke by growing. And I, I've seen this over the past couple of years with some um, food and beverage companies that we've consulted with that have been fortunate enough to land that whale of a contract with a company like Costco. And, you know, they, they put a new system in and didn't quite get it right and uh, couldn't figure out why, you know, sales kept growing, but there was no money. Well, the problem was they hadn't costed their inventory properly so they were selling at too low of a price so literally they were growing broke by increasing sales and when you're in a high growth mode you really need to watch cash flow and focus on preserving that capital because you need to reinvest it back in the business and you know understanding your inventory and your cost and labor is is absolutely mission critical to that growth so um, technology is also um, great support in terms of recipe management, and we're going to touch on that a little bit uh, later in my, my comments. Um, as you grow, you're going to need to continue to change your recipes, so having it digitized into a system is going to be a big help uh, along the way. And it also provides for some stability when people leave uh, or when you introduce new people into the production process. So that said, I think there's four key areas where technology can have an immediate positive impact on your business and still be cost effective to implement. So just like you engage a contract manufacturer to assist with making your product, don't be afraid to seek professional help to get your technology set up properly. So first stop on this journey is to invest in a basic general ledger package that gives you some room to grow. So it's important to get the general ledger set up right from the beginning. You need to be able to manage your bank account, pay your bills, and record sales. These are what I would consider to be the table stakes. And if you can't keep your business moving from a cash flow perspective, you're going to fail. And that's where we see a lot of companies trip up early on is, you know, the focus is on production and getting everything out. But you've got to be able to interact with your customer and, and get cash in the door to keep fueling that engine. And then, like I said before, far more time is going to be spent trying to recreate this down the road compared to doing it right the first time. I've, I've seen a lot of examples where, you know, we get that shoebox of information um, and, you know, we hear, hey, we need to get a financial out to a customer or somebody in short order here and, and things are just a mess. It just becomes a much more expensive proposition to go back and try and figure out what happened. So systems like QuickBooks or Sage Intact uh, work well with other software platforms. And I would encourage you to jump to at least a level like that and, and forego some of the less expensive or, or smaller systems that are out there because just because they're cheaper doesn't mean that they are uh, going to work out better. And, and sometimes you shortcut yourself uh, by not jumping up to at least that level because you really want to plan ahead a little bit and, and have systems that can integrate well uh, with other platforms that you may um, be wanting to use. And so the general ledger really becomes the hub in your overall technology wheel. And then um, making sure that you've got a good chart of accounts for a manufacturing entity is really important as well because you want to be able to track an account for your business in a way that makes sense and then you can sit down and analyze that or better yet have somebody else analyze that and provide you the feedback on how you need to improve. Uh, second step is to invest in a software uh, like Wherefore that can support recipe management, cost accounting, materials planning, inventory tracking, and this is really going to make your life easier and give you more control over what you're doing. And I'll be touching more on that in just a second. And then ideally, you want to make sure that this system integrates with your general ledger uh, in a seamless fashion. 
Uh, the next two areas I want to talk about in terms of um, technology deal with payroll and um, accounts payable. So um, it's important to look at, at something to help automate the process there. Um, and as you can see, technology is what we use through and through here. Um, Build.com or Concur or Plate IQ are excellent uh, pieces of software. They're not real expensive, but they'll just make the process of paying your bills a lot simpler, especially if you're working with an outsourced provider. So you'll be able to approve things on a, an iPhone or an iPad uh, kind of on the go wherever you're at. And um, it just takes the hassle out of having to handle paper bills and, and you know deal with things in that regard. And then I cannot say enough about utilizing an outsourced payroll provider. Um, I've, I've had several companies over the last few years that have tried to do this themselves, and every time it turns into a mess. Um, and it's not necessarily just getting the, the weekly or biweekly payroll out. It's the filing of the returns and dealing with all the other minutia that um, these payroll providers can assist you with. So for small companies, we really recommend Gusto. As you grow, there's a myriad of, of companies that are out there that you can work with. Um, if you're looking for kind of an all-in-one solution, we also work with Trinet, um, which handles both payroll and HR. So if you've got questions around that, we'd be happy to, to discuss that. And, and the one thing I can tell you around payroll software is most of our companies have some sort of issue with the payroll software. So it doesn't do every single thing that every single company does, but the benefits far outweigh the challenges in terms of dealing with some of the administrative tasks there. So let's shift gears a little bit now. And, and how does all of this impact your recipes? Well, as your company grows, it's going to experience changes that, that really do impact these recipes. So for smaller companies, you might be operating off of a recipe that's inside a founder's head or written on an old recipe card. And that's all in good and well until something happens to that founder or a disaster strikes and poof, there goes your recipe process. So obviously documenting and moving this to a digital environment ensures business continuity. If you have an MRP or an inventory system uh, or an ERP like Wherefore, your trade secrets are up on a platform through Amazon Web Services that's utilized by a lot of companies. So from a security standpoint, um, you know, companies like Dole and McDonald's and McCormick all run their stuff through Amazon Web Services. So your data is going to be safe and secure. And then a company like Wherefore also uses a software called uh, Heroku. Uh, that adds a level of encryption on top of that. And one thing I like about Wherefore as well is your data is yours. They don't sell it, so it's always secure. Um, and, you know, you can trust that uh, no one else is going to have access to your information. So when you move to a digital environment, this also allows for greater flexibility as you grow. Recipes that are used when you're producing those small batches in that commercial kitchen or at home are going to be significantly different compared to the recipes you use once you start to scale up and your batches get larger. And there's a myriad of items that will change from the actual ingredients, uh, the type and the size of the machinery that are being used in the production process, the way that you mix the ingredients, your cook times, your cool times, and the way that you clean and sanitize your kitchen and your equipment, uh, just to name a few. Increasing a recipe is not necessarily a one plus one equals two proposition. There's a lot of different factors that, that go into that, and a lot of it comes down to science, uh, which goes well, abo well above and beyond what we can do for you on the accounting side. Um, but having your recipes in a system with the corresponding notes on how to actually produce the product will allow you to make adjustments to the recipes on the fly and be able to continue to track the ingredients, which is critical from a traceability standpoint. Utilizing technology will also allow you to break down the recipes into sub-assemblies or production steps. So as you scale, the way that you actually produce will change. So this becomes an efficiency issue for you. It's also important from a continuity and confidentiality standpoint. Having it memorialized in a system means that anyone on your team can step in to produce. 
so you're not relying on one person that's the holder of the most critical corporate knowledge that you have. Now, if someone leaves, you're also not left in a pinch. And alternatively, you don't have one central employee who has all of the weight of production on their shoulders uh, and can never take time away from the business. The same technique uh, also comes in handy for companies who want to preserve the confidentiality of their recipes by breaking that process down so that no one person has all the information. Um, that's another way to achieve this. And with a system like Wherefore, you can also restrict access on the recipes so that only those that need to know have that information. Most of you, I'm sure, are aware of the next item I'm going to talk about, which is batch costing. Um, and this is another reason why technology becomes important, because you really need to have an accurate handle on what it actually costs to produce your product. As I mentioned earlier, uh, unfortunately, if you don't have a, a handle on this, you can literally grow broke. Um, and so typically, batch, excuse me, costing is done by batches. In a system like Wherefore, uh, you can track both your actual material and labor costs and compare that to the estimated standard cost to produce. So as you scale, the way that you make your product is going to change. And so the costing is going to change. The labor is going to change. Perhaps your overhead rates are going to change. Um, you may not be able to source the same ingredients. You may have to substitute some ingredients. Uh, your existing suppliers may not be able to keep up with the demand. So you may have to look to different suppliers, and that means different costing. Um, all of these are important to understand, and it can be useful to look at it from an efficiency standpoint as well, but um, pricing becomes really important, especially as you grow. And then tracking waste and yield. Uh, this is an, another area where I've seen companies struggle. Uh, when you produce food, you're going to have to deal with yield and waste. Uh, this is much easier when you're using a system, and Matt's going to run through uh, an example of this in just a moment when he gets into his portion of, uh, of the software. So yield relates to the conversion of food items in a recipe. So for example, if your recipe calls for 20 pounds of diced onions, but you're purchasing them by the box, you know, how do you convert that and how do you track it? A software like Wherefore can certainly assist with that. Um, they can help you come up with the true cost of your product so you'll have that data in order to be able to price it appropriately um, and know the correct amount of raw materials that you're actually going to need to purchase. Waste is another um, thing that can be characterized as several different way, in several different ways. What's actually discarded as part of the production process, so for example, you were supposed to produce 500 units with your recipe, but you only made 485. Well, I would certainly like to understand why. Um, you know, do we have a problem with the recipe? Do we have too much product left um, in containers as part of the manufacturing process? Um, did we just have, you know, a sloppy crew that was out there? So it's, it's a good um, technique and trend to follow to make sure that you understand what's happening there. And then also on the back end, you know, you produced 485, but only 450 were sold. So we'd need to understand what happened to those other 35 units. You know, were they, did they age out and, and weren't sold or were they damaged? Um, this is all information that goes directly to your bottom line. And so utilizing a system can certainly help you with that. And Matt will show you how you can track some of that uh, in the Wherefore software. Um, so now that I've outlined growth strategies and how they impact recipes, I want to give you a break from me and the slides and let Matt uh, run through um, the actual software itself so you can get an idea of what this looks like. So Matt, we'll, uh, we'll turn it over to you at this point and let you run through the software. Okay, great. Thanks, Frank. So yeah, when you think about going to a digital platform, uh, there are a number of benefits. Probably the biggest benefit is what we call single source of truth. And that is certainly true for your recipes and all the notes that you need to make that recipe. But more generally, it's true about all your inventory levels. Like Frank mentioned, you know, the yields on the last set of batches of production and what the cost variance of that was. All that can be in one system uh, like Wherefore and be accessible anytime you need it. And that that once you start flowing that data into a digital system, uh, computers really shine at doing 
complex things quickly and taking a lot of the tedium out of doing this. Uh, so if you are already doing some of this with other techniques like spreadsheets or pa pen and paper sometimes or, or some other system, this is the kind of thing that a digital system uh, can really give you some benefit to. So when it comes to recipes specifically, um, I think also too, as you start to grow, uh, organizations and people like investors or bankers or like Frank mentioned, the big customers like Costco or Walmart or Whole Foods, they love to know that the people they're getting the business with have some sort of system in place, tracking inventory, tracking cost, projecting their future needs, uh, keeping track of orders, just all of that. The more digital it is, uh, generally the happier those parties are with working with that company. And then also as you scale your team, just like Frank said, um, taking things like recipes and making them into components of manufacturing, you will start to probably uh, break that into various steps as you get bigger and bigger and your batches get larger, your, your equipment sizes will change. All of that has a material effect on how you produce your products now compared to how you might produce them a year from now. And so Wherefore has the ability to store various recipes in a system. Uh, this is what a recipe looks like in Wherefore. We help you track the expected yield. You can do things like say this recipe is a minimum batch quantity. And that just means maybe I have a constraint on certain equipment in my facility and every time I run this, it has to be this amount, no more, no less. And we also help you track things like lead times to produce various recipes and so on. We call them actually formulas and wherefore. And the reason we do that is there are different types of recipes in a business. There could be process-based or formula-based recipes where the yield can be all over the place depending on lots of variables. And then there can be discrete manufacturing techniques like assemblies, which uh, generally have consistent results. You know, I'm palletizing product and putting 12 cases on a pallet and it's always gonna work out that way. Our system handles that as well. Um, thinking about you know, getting data into a digital system compared to what you might be doing now, like Frank mentioned, we do have access rights for everything in our system. So you decide which team members uh, have access to either see things, change things, maybe have no access to them entirely. And our system will also redact any cost information if you choose. So certain people can only view or edit things, but they will not see any of the cost of your products or your inventory. And you can keep some of that data even more private. Another kind of side benefit is if somebody leaves or is fired from the team, you can deactivate their account immediately and all their data of what they've done in the system is there, but their, their login is gone, which can be a nice thing for keeping things straight. Of course, a single source of truth also means that any time you can come in and see what people, well, that was a bad example, no inventory there. Let me go to one with inventory. You can see what people have done in that uh, system, either with the inventory or the stock lot, the lot coded inventory that you're tracking. That can be a nice feature. And also too, um, if you think about this idea of as I'm growing and I want to spread this knowledge uh, throughout my team, um, being able to break that process into multiple steps is a really big advantage. The, the big companies do this, small and medium, it's harder to do this until you get to a certain size. But let me show you what I mean by that. Um, here's a process in our system to make an entire batch of product uh, from start to finish, and but it's broken into steps. So there, there may be some make a base material, make some additional changes to that base material all the way up to packaging. And in our system, those can be run by different people on the team, but it's ultimately creating either work in progress or finished goods as you go. And that fundamentally is what we consider a difference in a digital system between the idea of a recipe as a standalone thing 
and a recipe as configured to make a series of production steps. And we've actually designed our system to do things like templates where you determine um, a series of steps that describe a certain production process. And the net effect of that is you get to decide and configure the system accordingly. However you, way you wanna produce your products, uh, we can handle it. It's very modular and flexible because of the way we designed that. Digital, of course, is also much easier to manipulate um, than pen and paper or maybe even spreadsheets. So what I mean by that is if I need to come in and we are tracking exact cost here of all your lot coded inventory. If I need to make an adjustment, uh, maybe someone did a physical count and realized there's less than we thought, or they did a you know, manual count as well and need to change it, or they need to correct something. Maybe they, <laughs> here's a perfect example. Our system does track cost at this level of detail. And that is an actual production level cost that is driven by all the ingredients that were blended into that at that crazy decimal level, um, but that's the accuracy you want in a manufacturing process. So big companies will do this. They know their cost of goods sold down to the micro penny, I like to call it. And they, you know, they've built in efficiencies in their business. They have a, a lot of efficiencies that make it hard to compete with them on some level. Um, but the more you can make your business efficient in how you use inventory, you can start to be on a level playing field. Of course, with recipes in a system like Wherefore, you can easily clone and create variations of recipes. So if you find that you're doing a lot of R&D development of products, or you're just maybe a co-packer and you're uh, doing different variations of product lines for companies, you can do that here by quickly cloning a recipe and then adding or removing ingredients uh, from there. We also have a pretty unusual function in that if you're producing a product, you can add, remove, or edit ingredients for that product on the fly. And that means a couple things. One is additional ability to do R&D on your recipes, flexibility to do the kind of production where you might not quite know until you get there what you know exactly how much something you need to use and of course for traceability purposes you want to log and record everything that you do actually use and for costing purposes as well so having a system that lets you do that flexibly uh, can be a real advantage to your production team so we are tracking here is a good example we're tracking the exact amounts of each lot code that we want to use in this batch and so that's what our system will help you do. Of course, we enforce that to actually happen. Uh, another advantage of a digital system is people cannot proceed and do something if you do not want them to do that or you, it needs to be done a certain way. Digital is really good at making, making that happen. And um, let's talk about waste. So one of the things that is good to track and trace in production and manufacturing is this idea of waste. How much did I waste, if any, in this batch? And so our system, uh, I'll go into one work order that's already been completed, but when we go to finish a work order, we have the opportunity, let's see, let me do, yeah, this one. We have the opportunity to track how much we produced, how much we either scrapped or we can call it scrapped and write it off, or we can call it wasted. And what I mean by that is, if we, for some reason, ended up with 100 ounces of waste, we can come down here and say, I'm going to put 100 ounces of waste into a different inventory category, another bucket, so to speak, and track the cost, the units, and everything accordingly, um, and decide what I want to do with it from there. So I might send it to my accounting package, um, and then you know, zero it out and wherefore, or I might just keep running it for a year. And at the end of the year, I see you know, where I've gotten with my waste. But with each work order, keeping track of that gives you the ability to really refine your manufacturing process and make sure that you're doing things as efficiently as possible. 
course, um, waste and yield is a big factor in your cost. And I, you know, to go back to the screen, wanted to, do, you know, extra make this point of knowing your unit costs, your actual yields, um, you know, what cost of ingredients and keeping track of all the variances of those costs is uh, something big companies do all day long. Fleets of people that do it. Uh, the advantage of a digital system is you can force the system to do some of it for you. And then you as business owners or operators can come in and really uh, keep an, a better eye on your costs as they change. We do have the ability to do standard costs for, for formulas or recipes. So you can say uh, this normally should be, you know, $100,000 when we run this. Today it was $99,000. You know, maybe that's good enough. Uh, tomorrow it's 120,000. Whoa, what really happened? Let's dive into that and check it out. And the last kind of point, um, Frank, you touched on this a bit, this idea of keeping track of not just how much you have on hand now, but what you might be growing into. And it is, we see this too uh, with Sensaba. Um, you know, people get Costco as a customer and it's a great day when you land those big accounts. That's the thing we wanna help you do. And we also wanna help you make sure that you run efficiently. So as you scale up to meet the needs of that big order, you're not going to put too much money into inventory. And one of the ways you do that is what's called a material requirements plan. You may, maybe, maybe you're familiar with that concept, but it's, the idea is to keep an eye on what you've got forecast to sell to customers, what you've got already on hand, what might be coming in through existing purchase orders, what might be getting used up through existing orders or production runs, and factoring all that data. Again, this is fantastic for computers to do. Keep track of what you might run out of to fulfill those you know, next couple weeks of orders and what you're going to be A-OK -okay on. And of course, you want this to be not too much that you have on hand because that's just cash tied up in inventory and zero or not too much maybe that you're going to run out of so that you know you're running things very, very efficiently. And staying close to that line is uh, probably one of the biggest benefits of our system. So I think I'll, I'll stop there, um, make sure we leave time for questions. I'll stop sharing my screen so we can get back to our PowerPoint. And Frank, I'll turn it back over to you. Great. Thanks, Matt. Uh, I really appreciate you running through that. And, and it's a lot, a lot easier to visually see it when you're running through the slides. Um, so before we jump into Q&A, uh, we do have a couple of polling questions we'd like to put up. Uh, so Dee, if you could launch that real quick. Um, that would be great, and we can let folks take a look at those questions and, and please respond to them. One thing I realized I forgot to mention is uh, Wherefore is based in Sonoma County, California, so north of the Bay Area, uh, the area that had the fires the last couple years. And it's been interesting to see companies in our area, our regional area, start to really consider fire as part of their business plan. Um, unfortunate to have to do that, but it seems like that might become a thing from here on out. And so companies we work with locally are definitely kind of keeping that in mind. Hopefully I don't bias the poll questions by saying that. <laughs> I just realized. <laughs> Okay, it looks like we've got, I think, enough of our polling questions answered. I'm gonna go ahead and end polling here in just a moment. So if you have any questions you wanna answer, just get them in in three, two, and one. There we go. Great, okay. so, um, and, and Dee, can they see the results up on the screen by any chance? Because I, I probably have a, there we go. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, in terms of being concerned with fire or flood, it's a little bit of a mixed bag, um, but certainly, you know, somewhat on people's minds. Um, managing your recipes, it looks like some of you are still using uh, a Word doc, and uh, some of you have it on 
uh, another platform or document saved in multiple locations, so that's good. And some of you are using something else. Um, and then recipe secrecy, um, you know, is is a moderate to a, a, a large concern. So, um, you know, I think certainly using a, a digitized system can can certainly help with that. Um, so, to the extent you guys have questions, please uh, type them into the uh, chat box. We've got a couple already that we've got here. So, Matt, maybe you could you could answer this one. How do you keep track of multiple versions of a formula in Wherefore? Sure. Yeah. So, in our system, you might remember I, I showed how you can clone a recipe. Um, the most common approach that our customers do is excuse me, either keep track of, you know, uh, make base dough version one, version two, or maybe version, uh, you know, with a, a date that, that they use to keep track of in their R&D kind of process. There's, there's two techniques. So one is if you're doing R&D, um, you're really refining a recipe to kind of ultimately get to a, a finished recipe. And then you probably want the other recipes around, but you don't want to look at them all the time. In our system, you can make them inactive. And so they're always going to be there, uh, but you don't have to look at them all day long. And then the other approach is probably more of a typical co-packer or somebody who's really growing their product line with a different variants. And that is a typically a combination of cloning and revising a recipe, but also thinking about changing production processes as, as you go too. So it's not just the recipe will change, it's, it might be broke, breaking one recipe into two sub recipes and so on and so on. Uh, but our system does do allow, does allow for both. Okay. Another question that came in is, is what size should a company be before they decide to outsource? And is a company ever too small? Um, and unfortunately, the answer to that is it depends. Um, I always recommend, um, you know, getting your feet wet with some of this so you have an understanding of what it takes. And, and many of you will, will start that process, you know, when you're maintaining things on paper or in Excel. Um, and so you can start out as early as possible. What I like to tell people is the earlier you start, the easier it is to get you up and running. And then we can also, um, you know, get you set up so that if you wanted to maintain this on your own, we could certainly get that set up for you. So outsourcing can be fully outsourcing or can just be getting you set up. So it's really um, up to you and, and how much you can take on. But what we typically see is by the time a company is, is at that point where they're producing regularly, so, you know, a few times a week uh, at least, um, that's, that's about a good time to really get somebody else involved. So you can focus on growing your business and spending time there and not worrying about the back office. Um, and then Matt, another one maybe that you could take a look at is how do you determine the standard cost of a formula? Sure. Um, so what we recommend and what we find our customers do uh, that works pretty well is most food companies have a pretty good maybe general sense of what a batch of products should cost or um, you know, what maybe generally a unit cost should be. But I think the challenge and the structural struggle and the opportunity for, for companies of any size is it's, it's good to know, okay, maybe it's $5 unit per unit uh, thereabouts. And that might not seem like such a big deal to have a, you know, give or take 10 or 15 percent on that knowledge but just like frank like you mentioned and we see this too with the big order that suddenly arrives uh, the game has really changed at that point so even if you're 50 cents off it doesn't it's not a big deal as much when you're small or small volume as you grow and scale that 50 cents starts to turn into a big big problem and so the way you determine standard cost is if you have data on past productions, you can do it based on number of units produced. Of course, you have to factor in any yield variables or any waste factors. So hopefully you're recording that as you go. Uh, if you haven't been doing that, then starting with a system like Wherefore 
or some sort of digital platform will at least get you started paying attention and tracking some of that data. Um, and of course you can start to dial in as you go. And that's, uh, that's really kind of key, I think here. Yeah, the, the one thing I would add to that too is, is the other big variable there is labor. And if you're not prepared when those big orders come in or when the growth starts to happen, your labor costs can swing wildly. So for example, if, if you, know, you haven't broken your process down, you may have way too many people out there on the floor at any given point in time and, and you've got people standing around with nothing to do, just depending on the way that you make your product. And then, um, you know, if, if you don't have a, a decent way of actually laying this out, you could end up paying a bunch of overtime because you've got to run additional shifts or you've got to have people stay. And, and that all really just goes straight to the bottom line. So something to really pay attention to. Yeah. I, just to tag off of that as well. Um, there's this interesting life cycle with food and beverage these days, uh, especially that the point you made about going out to a co-packer or keeping it in-house, co-packers have a lot of advantages uh, to use them in terms of, you know, they're buying equipment and a lot of the manufacturing hassle is on them. But at some point, um, as you scale maybe past that, you're going to want to capture some of that margin back in-house. And knowing costs when you're small, it's easier. It's good, kind of good. I guess, corporate um, culture to develop early on. Like you said, Frank, start with technology early. And then as you go through that life cycle, you're building hopefully years of data that then you can then leverage off of and use as a foundation every time you need to make a business decision or decide on co-packer or buy equipment or you know, grow facility, you've got kind of just better data to make decisions with. Okay, um, so I think that's it on the questions that have come in so far. Um, if there's anything else, uh, please get them sent in. Otherwise, we will uh, move to wrap up. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining. Uh, appreciate you uh, dialing in. And like I said at the beginning, if you have any ideas for future discussions, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, my email address and Matt's email address and our phone numbers are there on the screen. Uh, we'd certainly, you know, be willing and, and wanting to hear from you uh, because we want to make sure that these things are useful for you. We will post this, uh, if not later today, then tomorrow. So you've got the replay available and the slides will also be sent out to you. So once again, uh, thanks everyone for joining and we will sign off.